Hey, kids and family, how are we doing this week? So we're here for lesson number two during our Easter series right now. And I hope you enjoyed the first one that we talked about the triumphal entry of Jesus into the city of Jerusalem as he's getting ready to prepare for kind of his greatest, greatest feat, which was actually his resurrection. And so right now, today, I'm going to switch up the story a little bit. And we're actually going to talk about dirty feet. Now, let me tell you something. If you've ever been to my house and you smell something, it's actually Josh's feet. For those of you that don't know, my oldest son has really stinky feet. But it's not his fault. He got it from me. I have stinky feet as well. Now, we're going to talk about a time that Jesus and his disciples lived in, and they walked everywhere. They didn't have cars. They didn't have nice shoes. They had these sandals, and they walked around everywhere everywhere through the desert and can you guarantee that their feet were pretty stinky as well now anytime they came to a, a house it was actually the host's job to have their feet washed when they came in and it was actually usually one of the lower servants job to wash the feet of the guests when they came in it was just like a good gesture of of cleaning their feet as they came in that they can take off their shoes and relax but this story goes a little bit different. And we're going to start today with Jesus washing his disciples' feet. And we're going to be reading out of John chapter 13, verses 1 through 17. And once again, kids, if you have your Bible at home, hopefully you do, we're going to be on page 1184. 1184. Once again, that's John chapter 13, verses 1 through 17. So here we go. So it was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Verse 2. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Issachar, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power. And that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. Now, last week we talked about a word, humble. Not thinking of, you, thinking of yourself higher than other people. As is said in this verse, Jesus knew exactly who he was. He knew that he had all the power in the world of earth and heaven. That he was the son of God. But yet he didn't think of himself as highly over others like you would think. And so in this moment, he's actually doing a job of a lower servant. Okay, so let me continue. In verse 6, he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Verse 8, no, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Verse 9, then Lord Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. And Jesus answered, Those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean. And you are clean, through not every, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. And, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. Verse 12, when, we had finished, when he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. 
Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than the master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Verse 17. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. So what Jesus is presenting right here to his disciples is a way that they should act. They should act in, in, in servanthood and be ready to serve others and not think of themselves as better than others. Remember the word humble from last week? Well, this week's word is servant. How can you be a servant to others? Jesus found ways to serve his people even though they technically didn't deserve it. But he loved them. It said that he loved us so much that he would do anything for us. So this week, I challenge you kids at home to be a servant to your family. And not just a way where they ask you to do your chores and you do it without whining, but to actually find new ways to serve your family. Maybe it's doing something that's not on your chore list and just doing it and not even looking for recognition. And I challenge you that as you start to think outside the box, let us know on our Zoom hangouts, our afternoon hangouts on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 3 p.m. that let the other kids know what you're doing too. It's fun to share with the crew and just let us all know what you're doing. So I challenge you this week, be servants for your family and your friends. So we're going to close out in a prayer. And Jesus, we just thank you for everything you do in our lives. We thank you, Lord, that you're providing for us and that you love us so much. That as we enter this season right now of your resurrection, but that we also remember that you loved us and you came here as a son of God, but you didn't think of yourself higher than anyone else. You came here to serve, Lord, and we thank you for that. So I, I pray, Lord, that you challenge our hearts this week, that we can be better servants for you and for our families and for just everyone else that we love, Lord. And we thank you, and I pray protection over all the families and loved ones out there. And just once again, Lord, thank you for everything you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.